Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at learnohub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICC class 10 physics chapter 3 machines. We have done the introductory part. Today, we will be discussing about pulleys and solve problems related to it. First of all, what is a pulley? A pulley is a single rotatory wheel and a rope system. Here you can see a figure. This is an example of single fixed pulley. There are two types of pulley, single fixed pulley and single movable pulley. Okay, here we will be discussing about single fixed pulley. A pulley which has its axis of rotation stationary in position is called single fixed pulley. Just look at this figure. So, this is the one we are using in case of a well. That is, in order to take water in a bucket from a well, you will be using this system. Here, we can see this is the axis of rotation. This axis of rotation is fixed to a rigid support. Okay, here we have a rigid support, which means this axis is not movable. This axis will be stationary. Okay, here you can find a rotatory wheel. This is your rotatory wheel. And we have the rope. Okay, this is your rope. Now, what happens in this case is why is this used? We know that to lift water from the well, when you apply force in the upward direction, it is difficult. But applying force in the downward direction makes it more convenient. To change the direction of application of force, we are using this system. Okay, the system of single fixed pulley is used in case of a well to lift water from well. Here, this is your load. Okay, so one end of the rope, the load is connected and to the other end, effort is applied. Effort is a force that you are applying. When the effort is applied, what happens? Effort is applied in the downward direction. Okay, you are pulling the rope in the downward direction. A tension will be created. This tension is created in the string in the upward direction. When you pull it downwards, the tension will be created in the upward direction. Okay, this is equally distributed here. Okay, the same tension will be in this end of the rope. Tension is in the upward direction and in which direction is the load? Load should move in the upward direction. Here, the force of gravity is acting on the load. Weight of the load. Okay, load is actually the weight of the body. Okay, weight is acting downwards. Here, the effort will be equal to the tension created. Effort that you are putting will be equal to the tension that is created. Tension T. Okay. Same tension is there here also. Which means this tension will be equal to the load L. Okay. Tension will be equal to the load L. In order to lift the load, effort should be equal to the load. That is, here effort is equal to tension and tension is equal to load. Therefore, effort E is equal to load L. Clear? If you have to lift a 100 Newton load, you will have to apply a force of 100 Newton in this system. When you apply 100 Newton force as the effort, you can lift a 100 Newton load. If it is 200 Newton, you will have to apply a force of 200 Newton. So, this is the system. Clear? Understood? Next, let us see how to calculate the mechanical advantage, velocity ratio and the efficiency of a single fixed pulley. We have studied these terms. What was mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is equal to load divided by effort. It is the ratio of load and effort. Yes. Now, here in this case, we have discussed Effort is equal to tension and tension is equal to load. Therefore, effort is equal to load. When effort and load becomes equal, you will be getting mechanical advantage is equal to 1. The value of mechanical advantage is 1. Okay. Next, let's see how to calculate the velocity ratio. How to find velocity ratio? What is velocity ratio? Velocity ratio is the ratio of Displacement of effort to the displacement of load. If you haven't watched the previous video, we have discussed all these there. Go watch it first. DE by DL. Okay. DE is the displacement of effort. Which means how much force is applied here will be pulling the rope in the downward direction. How much the rope has moved. Okay. That distance the rope has moved. 
here again the load will also be moving when you pull the rope in this direction the load will be moving upward here if it moves through 10 cm the load will also move through 10 cm okay so distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load in this case 10 cm if it is if the rope here is moving downward the load will be moving upward 10 cm they will be equal which means distance moved by effort is equal to distance moved by load what is the ratio then ratio will be equal to 1 we are getting the velocity ratio also equal to 1 now how to find the efficiency efficiency is represented by the letter eta greek letter eta is used to represent efficiency what is efficiency in this case efficiency is the ratio of mechanical advantage to the velocity ratio mechanical advantage we calculated that is 1 what about the velocity ratio velocity ratio is also equal to 1 which means efficiency is 1 or 100 percentage efficient okay this is the ideal case this we are considering the rope mass of rope to be negligible the rope is having no mass and there is no friction considered when this motion is happening there will be friction between the axle and the rotatory wheel so that friction and all is neglected we are presetting that there is no friction there is no mass for the rope in that case you will be getting mechanical advantage 1 velocity ratio 1 and the eta value that is 100 percentage now if there is a mass of rope consider what happens when the load is increasing what happens the effort here will be having to apply more effort in that case mechanical advantage will decrease velocity ratio anyways it will be the same then when you take the eta value you will be getting the efficiency a value that is less than one less than 100 percentage okay, efficiency we have said can never be more than 100 percentage either 100 percentage or less than 100 percentage clear next we have single movable pulley what is a single movable pulley a pulley whose axis of rotation is movable that is not fixed in position is called a movable pulley in the previous case we said that the axis of rotation is fixed here you can see the figure what is fixed we have the axis here and it is not fixed it is movable this is your axle axle is movable depending on the load it is movable okay now one end of the rope here you have the rope one end of the rope is fixed to the rigid support through a hook okay the other end is where the force we are applying we are applying force in the upward direction we know this is not a convenient direction in this system the force is applied in the upward direction okay when the force is applied in the upward direction what happens again tension is created here the tension will also be in the upward direction only okay the effort will be equal to the tension that is created in the string okay and this tension will be acting in this side of the rope as well now in which direction is the load the force on load is acting in the downward direction because of weight when you apply a force here that is when you apply the effort what happens the load will be moving upward here what you have to remember is we will have to apply less force compared to the load okay why because in this case this pulley that is single movable pulley is a force multiplier okay with a less force more effect can be produced in the previous case to apply force in a convenient direction we are using a single fixed pulley here it is not the convenient direction we know convenient direction is in the downward direction applying force in the downward direction here we are applying force in the upward direction so not convenient direction what happens is the system will act as a force multiplier okay now let's see here if you have to lift a hundred newton load you just need to apply 50 newton force okay i'll be explaining this to lift 100 newton load you will just have to apply a force of 50 newton because this load will be acting in both these directions that is in both these ropes tension will be created and this tension will be equally distributed okay the load will be equal to 2t 2t means the tension here and here okay half of the load will go here half of the load that force will be going here so you can write that load is equal to two times tension and the tension can be written as load divided by two so l by two is the tension here and l by two is the tension here 
okay then what is the effort effort we know is the tension here the tension is l divided by 2 E is equal to L by 2. So this is how you are getting. When 100 Newton load is to be lifted, you just need to apply 100 divided by 2, which is 50 Newton of force. Okay, the effort is just 50 Newton. Understood? Now let us find the mechanical advantage, velocity ratio and efficiency of a single movable pulley. Okay, here you have a single movable pulley. This is your load. We know the load will be equal to the tension that is the sum of the tension in both these ropes. So here the tension is equal to L by 2. Here again tension is equal to L by 2. Okay. This tension is the effort. Therefore effort is equal to L by 2 which means the load is equal to 2 times effort. Load is equal to 2 times effort. Okay. Now we can find the mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is equal to load divided by effort. Here the load is equal to 2E. 2 times effort divided by effort cancelling you get 2. Mechanical advantage is 2. Okay. Next, to find the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio is the distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. Here, if you are moving the effort by 8 centimeter, okay, you are lifting it by 8 centimeter. Then the load will be moving only through 4 centimeter or if D is the distance that is moved by the effort, then the load will be moving only a distance of D by 2. Okay. D by 2 will be the distance. Clear? So, you will be having distance moved by effort is equal to D and distance moved by load is D divided by 2. Okay. Taking the reciprocal, you will be getting 2D by D. DD gets cancelled. Answer is 2. Velocity ratio is also equal to 2. Now we can find the efficiency eta. Efficiency eta is mechanical advantage divided by velocity ratio. What is the mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is 2 and the velocity ratio is also equal to 2 which means efficiency is 1 or 100 percentage. Now this is the ideal case again. Okay, that is we are not considering the mass of rope. Mass of rope is taken negligible and the mass of pulley is also taken negligible. What is only considered is a load. Okay, there is no friction considered. If there is friction, then what happens? The effort that you will have to apply will be greater than L by 2. Okay, effort will be greater than L by 2. Now, here we know that the mechanical advantage is load divided by effort. If effort is greater than L by 2, which means if effort is increasing, what happens? Mechanical advantage will decrease. Yes, denominator increases. Here, the numerator will decrease and the numerator is directly proportional to the mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage will decrease. Yes, so the mechanical advantage is inversely proportional to the effort. Okay, when effort increases, mechanical advantage decreases. Now, when mechanical advantage decreases, what happens to efficiency? We know that efficiency is directly proportional to mechanical advantage. Yes, when mechanical advantage part increases, that is we are not considering the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio we are taking as a constant. Okay, when mechanical advantage increases, efficiency increases. When mechanical advantage decreases, efficiency decreases. Here, when effort increases, that is, effort is greater than L by 2, then mechanical advantage is decreasing. Mechanical advantage is decreasing means efficiency is decreasing. That is, efficiency will be less than 100 percentage. Okay. The system will be having an efficiency that is less than 100 percentage. So, this is the real concept. Okay. In a real system, this is what happens. In ideal concept only, that is an ideal concept, you can say that efficiency is, efficiency of the system is 100 percentage. When friction and the mass is not considered. Let us now compare the single fixed pulley and single movable pulley. First point is, it is fixed to a rigid support. As we said, it is fixed to a rigid support in case of a single fixed pulley. What about single movable pulley? It is not fixed to a rigid support. What is fixed is just the end of a rope. 
end of rope is fixed to a rigid support but the axle and the pulley system is not fixed to a rigid support next is its mechanical advantages but in case of single fixed pulley we got mechanical advantage equal to what what about the movable pulley in movable pulley we calculated the mechanical advantage and it is equal to 2 why is it happening because effort is equal to load divided by 2 okay velocity ratio is 1 in this case and here the velocity ratio is 2 why because the distance moved by the effort is 2 times the distance moved by the load okay the weight of pulley itself does not affect its mechanical advantage so in this case the weight of pulley is not affecting the mechanical advantage but here the weight of pulley itself reduces the mechanical advantage we have calculated it the efficiency is decreasing when effort increases when the load changes up that is when the weight of pulley is considered effort will become more when effort becomes more mechanical advantage what is happening is decreasing so it is affecting it is used to change the direction of effort so this is an important point why both these are used single fixed pulley main purpose is to change the direction for a convenient direction to apply the effort from upwards to downward or else you will have to lift the water from well in this direction you will be have to applying in the upward direction so in the convenient direction is applying force in the downward direction next when case of movable pulley why it is used it is used as a force multiplier we are getting the load is equal to 2 times effort which means effort is load divided by 2 only half the load we have to apply force as the effort okay next the load moves in a direction opposite to that of effort in movable the in the case of fixed pulley we have seen that in which direction is the load moving load is moving in the upward direction okay force is applied that is effort is in the downward direction what about this case the load moves in the direction of effort load is moving upward and the force effort is also being applied upwards okay axis of rotation does not move in the space okay here the axis of rotation also move we have seen axis of rotation is fixed in the case of fixed pulley single fixed pulley in movable pulley it is moving with the load it will be moving it will be raising up it will be coming down clear next is the combination of pulley why are pulleys combined we know the use of a single fixed pulley and single movable pulley single fixed pulley is to apply force in a convenient direction that means we can apply it in the downward direction here you have a single fixed pulley okay this is a single movable pulley why is it used it is used as a force multiplier this is for force multiplier and here this is used for applying in a convenient direction okay so when you combine both these both the effect will be there that is both the qualities can be included in a system okay now when you have a single fixed pulley with a single movable pulley we know that here no changes is made that is what force uh, what was the load here the same will be the effort okay here when you have a load the tension will be created and this tension is the effort in this case and this is reduced by half okay the same effort will act as load here which means this reduced will be acting here there is no change made also the distance moved by load and effort will be changing only in this part yes the load will be moving a distance that is half that of the effort okay here there is no change what here only the thing is that you can apply force in the downward direction so in order to apply force in the downward direction you are attaching this pulley to the system okay there are two different ways this can be done combination of pulley can be done one is using one fixed pulley and other movable pulley when you have a heavy load just by using a single movable pulley you cannot lift it just what is happening here to lift 100 newton you will have to apply 50 newton right if the load is more than 100 newton it is a very big value what can be done more movable pulleys can be included in that case the effort will be reduced in that same amount okay next system is using several pulleys in two block block and tackle system this is known as block and tackle system we will be discussing these in details okay so here you have the setup of a single fixed pulley with combined with several other movable pulleys you have taken three movable pulleys and a single fixed pulley now effort is applied here and where is the load connected load is connected to the first one first movable pulley we are connecting the load 
Okay, this is your second, which is represented by B, and this is your third, represented by C. Okay, D is a fixed pulley. It is fixed. All these are fixed to a rigid support. Here, in these cases, the axles are free to move. Here, the axle is fixed to this end. Okay, now this T three is the tension created, and here you are applying the effort. Why is this used? This is used to apply force in a convenient direction. Here we have the load. Okay. All these helps us to reduce the force. Okay. Because these are force multipliers. Movable pulleys, we know they are force multipliers. Therefore, this helps us to reduce the force that is to be applied. That reduce the effort that is to be applied. And why is this used? This is used to apply the force or effort in a convenient direction. Now just look at this. Here we have the load. Because of this load, tension is created in both these ropes. Okay, this rope here it is connected to the hoop to a rigid support, and this part of the rope is connected to the axle of the second pulley. Okay, now due to this load, tension is created here, which means we can say that the load will be equal to tension in the first part of the rope to the plus the tension in the second part of the rope. L is equal to T one plus T one or We can write L is equal to two T one. Okay, then what is T one? We'll be having T one is equal to L divided by two. Here, the tension created is L by two, and here also L by two. Now, this tension created will be the load for the next pulley. Okay, this will be acting as load for the next pulley. Okay, now here we have T one. T one can be written as T two plus T two. What is T one? T one is L divided by two. L divided by two is T two plus T two. Two T two. Okay. From this we can write T two is equal to L divided by two into two. That is L divided by four or L divided by two square. Load divided by two square, which means the effort that is to be applied is reducing. Here it reduced to half. Again it reduced to half. Okay. Now we got T two is equal to L divided by two square. This T two will be acting as the load for the next pulley, next movable pulley. This is the load. Here we have tension T three and T three. T two is equal to T three. Plus T three. What is T two? T two is L divided by two square. Okay, that is equal to two times T three, or we can write T three is equal to L divided by two square into two. Two square into two, we'll be getting L by eight. Four into two is eight, or we can write this as L by two Q. Okay, this T three is equal to L by Two cube. Same tension is there in this rope also. Yes, this is also equal to L by two three. L by two cube. This is the effort. This T three will be equal to the effort, which means effort is equal to L divided by two raised to three. Okay. Now just remember, here we have used three movable pulleys. Okay, when three movable pulleys are used, you are getting effort is equal to load divided by two raised to three, or load divided by two cube. If I am using n number of movable pulleys, okay, we are using m number of movable pulleys. In that case, you will be having to apply an effort that is equal to L divided by two raised to n. Okay, where n is the number of movable pulleys. If there are five movable pulleys, don't consider the fixed pulley. Total, there are four pulleys here. Not considering the fixed one, only the number of movable pulleys. Depending on the number of movable pulleys, we can say what the effort is. If there are five movable pulleys, then the effort will be equal to L divided by two raised to five. Okay, this is how you can calculate the effort. Here, what do you understand? The tension is decreasing in each case because denominator is increasing. Here it was two. This is two square four. This is two cube three. When it goes to two raised to five, again the value is increasing. Denominator is increasing. 
which means the tension goes on decreasing. This tension is your final effort, okay? When it comes to the fixed pulley, the tension here will be the tension in this string as well. And this is your effort. The effort is decreasing. The value in the denominator increases. Effort will decrease. Okay, understood the system? Now let us find the mechanical advantage, velocity ratio and efficiency in this case. That is combination of pulleys. Here we have three movable pulleys and a fixed pulley. Okay, we are getting the effort is equal to load divided by 2 raised to n. Okay, how to calculate mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage is load divided by effort. Okay, here what is the load? Load is L. And effort is L divided by 2 raised to N, where N is the number of movable pulleys. We have taken the case of 3, then it comes 2 raised to 3. Okay. Now, taking the reciprocal, we will be getting L divided by L into 2 raised to N. L and L gets cancelled. Therefore, mechanical advantage is equal to 2 raised to N. So, if you know the number of movable pulleys, we can calculate mechanical advantage if it is 3. If the number of pulleys is equal to 3, mechanical advantage will be equal to 2 raised to 3, that is 8. If number of pulleys is equal to 5, in that case, mechanical advantage will be equal to 2 raised to 5, which is equal to 32. Okay, so this is about mechanical advantage. Now, what about velocity ratio? We have velocity ratio is distance moved by effort to the distance moved by load. Okay. Now, consider this case. Here you have the load. One end of this rope is connected to a fixed rigid support. Okay, other end is free to move. Because of this load, if this load moves by x distance, moves up by x distance, then this part of the rope, it will be moving 2x. Okay, we have studied this when we have discussed about the movable pulley. If here it moves by 5 cm, this part will be moving, that is the effort part will be moving 2 into 5, 10 cm. Okay, here it is 2x. Now this part is the load for the second pulley. Okay, if this moves by 2x, then here, when it comes to the effort part, there you will be having 2 into 2x, which is 2 square x. This part of the rope, which is connected to B, this part will be fixed. Here, this part cannot move. Because of this load, both the parts are not moving. This part will be fixed. Only the other part will be moving. Therefore, you will be getting 2 times x. Because of this effort, here it becomes 2 into 2 times x. This part of the rope will be moving 2 square x times. What about this part now? Here we have the effort. Because of this, if this part is moving by 2 square x, this is the load part for the pulley C. Okay, here you have the effort part. How much does it move? It will be moving 2 into 2 square x, which is 2 cube x. If this is moving 2 cube x, this string or this rope part is moving 2 cube x, then here again this part of the fixed pulley. The fixed pulley, the rope is here and this will also be moving 2 cube x distance. Okay, So, if the load is moving x distance, the effort part, the final effort part will have to move 2 cube x. In order to lift this load by x distance, you will have to move the rope part that is the effort part by 2 cube x. Clear? Now, you have got that the distance moved by effort is equal to 2 cube x and distance moved by load is taken as x. Here we have 3 movable pulleys. If the case is that you have n number of movable pulleys, then you will be getting distance moved by effort is equal to 2 raised to n x. Okay, distance moved by effort is 2 raised to n x. Velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by effort that is 2 raised to n x divided by distance moved by load which is x. x and x gets cancelled when you get 2 raised to n. Velocity ratio is equal to 2 raised to n. We are getting mechanical advantage 2 raised to n. Velocity ratio is also equal to 2 raised to n. If Number of pulleys is equal to 3, then the velocity ratio will be equal to 2 cube, that is 8. 
if number of pulleys is 5, velocity ratio will be equal to 2 raised to 5, which is equal to 32. Okay. This is how you can find the velocity ratio. Now, the efficiency. Efficiency we know. Efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage by velocity ratio. Here, the mechanical advantage is 2 raised to n. Divided by velocity ratio is also 2 raised to n. 2 raised to n by 2 raised to n, which is equal to 1. Again, we are getting efficiency 100 percentage. We are not considering the friction and the mass of rope and pulley system. Okay. Only the load is considered as a mass. In that case, you will be getting 100% efficiency or else the efficiency will be less than 100% when the normal case that is friction and the mass of rope is being considered. Clear? Next is your block and tackle system. Here you can find two setups that is block and tackle for five pulleys and the block and tackle for four pulleys. In this case, a single rope is used. Okay, The single rope here you can find five pulleys these three are the fixed pulleys these are fixed and these two are movable you have three fixed pulleys in this case and two movable pulleys what about this here you have two fixed pulleys and two movable pulleys okay always remember in this setup the number of Fixed pulleys should always be greater than the number of movable pulleys because to apply the force in the downward direction, this is more convenient. Now, how is it starting? So, here you have a rope, only a single rope is passing through all the pulleys. Okay, you can find that one end of this rope is connected to the hook of the axle of this pulley. Okay, you can find the rope, it is connected to the hooks of the axle of the lower pulley. What about the other end? It starts from here. This is how the rope goes. This is how the rope goes. And here you have the other end where you will be applying the effort. Okay. To the end, that is towards the downmost pulley, you will be connecting the load. Here you will be connecting the load. So because of this load, tension is created and this tension is equal at all the points in the rope. Okay. This is the tension here. The same tension will be present at all the points in the row. The tension will be same. There is no change in tension because this is how the setup is. Okay. Now, what about this case? That is, we are using two movable pulleys and two fixed pulleys. This part is your upper block and this is a lower block. Okay. This is how you have the block and tackle system. Now, here you have the row connected to the axle of the upper pulley. One end of the rope is connected to the axle of upper pulley. The other end is same. That is where you will be applying the force. Where you are applying the effort. Okay. This is your other end. And the load is connected to the lowermost pulley. So this is the setup of a block and tackle system. Why is it used again? So when more pulleys are used, the effort can be reduced. When the load is increasing, effort can be reduced when more number of pulleys will be used. So in this case, the point to remember is number of fixed pulleys should always be greater than or it can be equal to the number of movable pulleys. Movable pulleys should be less or equal to the number of fixed pulleys. Okay. So this is the basic idea about a block and tackle system. Let us consider four block and tackle system here in the first case you just have a single pulley okay single fixed pulley is there what is happening in case of a single fixed pulley we know that when you have a load here to lift the load the same effort will have to be applied so this is just to apply the force in a convenient direction a single fixed pulley is used in order to lift a 100 newton load 100 ne newton load is to be lifted okay here a tension will be created this tension will be equal to 100 newton the same tension will be acting here which is 100 newton and the effort part will also be equal to 100 newton. If the load moves by a distance of 10 centimeter, it means the effort has also been moved by 10 centimeter. You are pulling the rope by 10 centimeter only then the load will be moving through a height of 10 centimeter. This is the simplest case. Okay, Only a fixed pulley we are using here, single fixed pulley we are using here. Now take the second case. Here you are having a single fixed pulley and a single movable pulley. The axle is fixed and here the axle is able to move. Okay, we have the same load of 100 Newton. Let's see how much force we'll have to apply. 
okay because of this movable system that is a single movable pulley is present here the 100 newton force will be distributed as tension of 50 newton in each the each part of the rope okay this 50 newton will be the tension in this part therefore the effort here will be equal to tension and the effort is 50 newton no changes happening at this part why because this is a single fixed pulley in the single fixed pulley part what is happening only the convenient direction that is change in the application of force can be done okay or else you will have to apply force here and lift the load you are using a single fixed pulley just because you can apply force in this direction there is no change happening the tension will be same and you will have to apply an effort of 50 newton to lift 100 newton you will have to apply effort just 50 newton half of the load okay distance moved here in order to raise the load by 10 centimeter you will have to pull the rope by 20 centimeter the distance moved by effort will be 20 centimeter to move the load by 10 centimeter okay now the third case here what and all we have we have two fixed pulleys and one movable pulley okay now the tension that is created in the rope will be equally distributed this load will be equally distributed as tension in these three parts of the rope okay which means here the tension will be 100 divided by 3 here again 100 by 3 here again 100 divided by 3 you will be getting a value 33.33 newton okay so here you have a tension 33.33 newton here again 33.33 newton here also 33.33 newton so this end part is the same here okay the tension in this rope part will be the tension in this also which means the effort will be 33.33 newtons clear so in order to lift a load of 100 newton you just need to apply a force apply an effort of 33.33 newtons again reduced here it was 100 newton here when you used a single movable pulley and a single fixed pulley effort reduced to 50 newton and here it reduced to 33.33 newton what about the distance that is to be moved you will have to move the rope by 30 centimeter in order to lift it through a height of 10 centimeter to lift the load through a height of 10 centimeter okay now the final part that is you are having two fixed pulleys and two movable pulleys okay here the load is 100 newton the tension will be created in all these ropes same rope in every part tension will be created which is equally distributed by the load if it is 100 newton 25 here 25 here 25 here 25 here the final part this 25 will be same in this part as well the tension will be equal to 25 newton here tension is 25 newton okay which means the effort will also be equal to 25 newton effort is 25 newton from 100 newton that is to lift a load of 100 newton when you have this system of two fixed and two movable pulleys you just need to apply an effort of 25 newton it has reduced right yes what about the distance mode here the, to lift the load by 10 centimeter distance you will have to move the rope that is the effort should travel a distance of 40 centimeters Okay. When you move the rope through 40 centimeters only, then you can lift it by 10 centimeters. Clear? So, here you have seen that 100 Newton was the effort in the first case. It reduced to 50 Newton when two pulleys are used, one movable and one fixed. In the third case, when two fixed and one movable is used, again it reduced to 33.33. Two fixed and two movable is used in the fourth case where you will have to apply only an effort of 25 newtons clear now let us find the mechanical advantage velocity ratio and efficiency in case of a block and tackle system we have seen the different cases in the first case that is when one pulley system was used we found that the load is equal to effort okay load creates a tension and the same tension is a effort okay 
when you had two pulley system that is a single fixed and a single movable pulley there we found that the effort is just half the load okay load will be two times effort or effort is l by 2 to lift 100 newton we just needed to apply a force of 50 newton okay which means we have a tension that is what is happening to tension load will be equal to two times tension and effort is equal to the tension only then we will be getting load is equal to two times effort what about three pulley system in three pulley system that is we had two fixed and one movable what we got was the load is equal to three times effort Yes, we are getting a value of effort 33.33, 33.33 into 3 you will be getting the load value. Okay, here the load is equal to 3 times tension. In 3 ropes it is going, the load is 3 times tension, T plus T plus 3. And the effort will be equal to T. Okay, now 4 pulley system. In 4 pulley system what we got? The load is equal to 4 times effort. Effort is 25 Newton and the load is 25 into 4 which is 100 Newtons. Okay. Which means the load will be equal to 4 times tension. 4 times tension. T plus T plus T plus 3. We have seen that 4 ropes were there. Okay. And the effort will be equal to the tension. Now what is the mechanical advantage? Mechanical advantage we know is equal to load by effort. Here... In this part, load and effort are the same. We will be getting mechanical advantage equal to 1. L by E will be equal to 1. What about this case? Here L is equal to 2E and we have effort E. Therefore, mechanical advantage will be equal to 2E by E which is equal to 2. What about this case? Here you will be getting 3E divided by E which is 3. Mechanical advantage will be 3. Here it will be 4. What does this mean? Depending on the number of pulleys used, the mechanical advantage will be the value that is the number of pulleys used. Here if you have n number of pulleys then the load will be equal to n into effort. When n is equal to 1, we are getting load is equal to effort. When n is equal to 2, load is equal to 2 times effort. When n is equal to 3, load is equal to 3 times effort. And when n is equal to 4, load is equal to 4 times effort. If it is n, n is the number of pulleys, then you have load equal to n into E divided by the effort E. Cancelling will be getting a value n. Okay. Next, the velocity ratio. How to find velocity ratio? Velocity ratio is the distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. In the first case, that is one pulley system. One pulley system, we have seen that the distance moved by effort is equal to 10 centimeter and the distance moved by load is also equal to 10 centimeter. Then you will be getting the velocity ratio equal to 10 by 10, which is 1. Okay. Velocity ratio will be equal to 1. Next, two pulley system, one fixed and one movable. Here, distance moved by effort will be 20 centimeter to move distance moved by the load will be equal to 10 centimeter. Distance moved by load we are taking in all cases as 10 centimeter, but here the effort should move through 20 centimeter. Then, what is the velocity ratio? Velocity ratio is equal to Distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load 20 by 10 which is equal to 2. Next if you are taking the 3 pulley system. In 3 pulley system distance moved by effort was equal to 30 centimeter and distance moved by load is equal to 10 centimeter. Therefore velocity ratio is equal to 3. Okay. Next the 4 pulley system. Distance moved by effort was equal to 40 centimeter. Distance moved by load is equal to 10 centimeter. And the velocity ratio is equal to 40 by 10, which is 4. What does this mean? If you have n pulleys, n number of pulley, what do we get then? The distance moved by effort will be n into distance moved by load. 
okay distance moved by effort will be n into distance moved by load therefore velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by effort n into distance moved by load divided by distance moved by load cancelling will be getting the answer n okay velocity ratio is also equal to n mechanical advantage is n velocity ratio is also n then what is the efficiency efficiency eta is equal to mechanical advantage divided by velocity ratio which is n divided by n equal to 1 or 100 percentage again this is the ideal case you have to mention in ideal case when friction is not considered the mass of rope and pulley is not considered only the mass of load is considered in that case efficiency is equal to 100 percentage when the other case that is the mass of the rope and friction is considered you will be getting a value for efficiency which is less than 1 or less than 100 percentage now when you consider a system of n number of pulleys and we are considering the weight of the pulley as well not just the load but the weight of pulley is also considered in that case what is your mechanical advantage velocity ratio and efficiency this is not the ideal case this is the actual case that we are considering first to calculate the mechanical advantage we know that the effort is the tension that is created okay in the ideal case we got that the load will be equal to n times the tension okay if there is just one pulley considered then load is equal to tension two pulleys load is equal to two times tension three pulleys load is equal to three times tension but here what is happening is along with load you have a weight that is weight of pulley is considered l is a load and the weight of pulley is considered so w plus l is equal to n times the tension okay then what is the mechanical advantage here you will be getting the actual load is equal to n times tension minus the weight of pulley okay then the mechanical advantage will be equal to the load divided by effort here the load is n t minus w divided by effort is equal to t either you can take like this or we know that the tension is the effort n e minus w divided by e okay remember this is the actual case that is you can write this as n e by e minus w by e e and e gets cancelled therefore the mechanical advantage is equal to n minus w by e so in the ideal case for a system of n number of pulleys we got the mechanical advantages n here you will have to reduce the ratio of weight of the pulley to the effort from n to get the mechanical advantage what does this mean the mechanical advantage in this case the actual case will be less than the mechanical advantage in the ideal case anyway this ratio will be ha having a value when this value is subtracted from n you will be getting the mechanical advantage in ideal case when it comes to velocity ratio velocity ratio will does not depend upon the weight of pulley and the velocity ratio will be the same that is n velocity ratio the same in the ideal case and in the actual case so mechanical advantage becomes n minus w by e and the velocity ratio is n what about efficiency efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage divided by velocity ratio that is n minus w by e whole divided by n okay now when n and n are cancelled so here you are distributing this denominator to both the parts minus w by n e this becomes 1 therefore 1 minus w by n e is your efficiency efficiency eta is equal to 1 minus w by n e okay this is your efficiency ideal value we got efficiency equal to 1 or 100 percentage so here what you're doing you're subtracting this quantity depending on the number of pulleys n is the number of pulleys when the number of pulleys increases this whole value will decrease okay denominator increases means the whole value will decrease then what will happen to the efficiency efficiency depending on the number of pulleys it will start to decrease okay efficiency will start to decrease it will be less than 100 percentage 
okay when this value is subtracted we'll be getting eta equal to a value that is less than 1 or 100 percentage when the number of pulleys are increased then the weight of the pulley and the friction all the parts will be increasing which means the efficiency goes on decreasing clear let's do a problem here you have the first problem a woman draws water from a well using a fixed pulley the mass of bucket and water together is 6 kg the force applied by the woman is 70 newton calculate the mechanical advantage we know mechanical advantage is equal to mechanical advantage MA is equal to load divided by effort. Here what is the load? What is the load here? The mass of bucket and water together is 6 kg. This is the load. So load will be mass into acceleration due to gravity. Given that acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square. So here you will be having the weight. Okay, weight of water and bucket together how to find weight what weight we know is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity mass given as 6 kg and acceleration due to gravity is taken as 10 therefore we get 60 the unit will be newton 60 newton is the load and what is the effort effort e here it is given that the force applied by the woman is 70 Newton. This 70 Newton force applied will be the effort. Okay, How much force she is applying to pull the rope? That is 70 Newton. Therefore, we can find mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is equal to load divided by effort. Here the load is 60 Newton. 60 divided by 70 which is equal to 6 by 7 you will be getting 0 0.857 mechanical advantage it is the ratio of force that is load is a force and effort is also a force newton newton units gets cancelled therefore mechanical advantage has no unit 0 0.857 is the value clear second problem a block and tackle system has five pulleys with an effort of 1000 newton is needed in downward direction to raise a load of 4500 newton calculate mechanical advantage velocity ratio and the efficiency of the system in order to calculate the mechanical advantage it is not given that this is an ideal system okay we know that mechanical advantage is equal to load by effort here load is given what is the load load is given to be equal to 4500 newton 4500 newton what about the effort Effort is 1000 Newton. Effort is 1000 Newton. Then you can calculate the mechanical advantage that is equal to load 4500 divided by effort 1000 which is equal to when you take the ratio you will be getting 4.5. Okay, 4.5 is your mechanical advantage. Now the velocity ratio. Velocity ratio in a block and tackle system we know the velocity ratio will be equal to the number of pulleys used Okay, the number of pulleys in the system here it is given that the number of pulleys is equal to 5 pulleys therefore velocity ratio will be equal to 5 Clear now the third one Efficiency it is given that this is not an ideal system. Okay, it is not necessary. This is an ideal system so, in the actual system, we know efficiency eta will be equal to mechanical advantage divided by velocity ratio. If the mechanical advantage is 4.5 divided by velocity ratio is 5. You will be getting 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is your efficiency. That is 0 0.9 into 100 percentage. You will be getting 90 percentage. So, this system, this block and tackle system is 90% efficient. Efficiency is less than 100%. Okay. Third problem. This is a question that came for ICSC board exam 2019. The diagram alongside shows a pulley arrangement. Copy the diagram and mark the direction of tension on each strand of string. Okay. Here you have the diagram. This is a system with the rigid support. This is your axle. In case of the fixed pulley and you have a movable pulley, this is the axle of movable pulley. To the axle of movable pulley, load is attached. Here you are applying the effort. We have to mark the direction of tension. Okay. Due to this load, there will be tension 
in these parts of the ropes and the direction of tension will always be in the upward direction okay here again the direction of tension will be upward when you are applying a force downwards tension will be in the upward direction clear okay so this is your complete diagram what is the velocity ratio of the arrangement how to find velocity ratio we know velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by the effort divided by distance moved by the load so in this system we know we have a fixed pulley and the movable pulley in case of fixed pulley we'll be having load is equal to effort in order to lift 100 newtons we'll have to apply a force of 100 newton load and effort will be same similarly the distance moved by effort will be equal to distance moved by load if you move this effort that is a rope by 10 centimeter then the load will also be raised by 10 centimeter so in this part there is no change happening only change happens in the first part that is in part in this part of movable pulley here what happens the effort that is to be applied effort that is to be applied will be half the load okay effort will be half the load what about the distance mode if you have to rise this load by 10 centimeter you will have to apply an effort such that it moves through a distance of 20 centimeter okay so when you move the effort by 20 centimeter only then you can rise this load by 10 centimeter clear okay therefore we can write that the distance moved by load if it is taken as x then the distance moved by effort should be equal to 2 times x okay the low effort should be moved by 2x distance only then the load can move by x distance then what is the ratio you will be having 2x divided by x which is equal to 2 velocity ratio is equal to 2 now the third part if the tension acting on the string is t then what is the relation between tension and effort e okay here you have the effort this effort and the tension here will be same effort will always be equal to the tension in that part of string clear next if the free end of the string moves through a distance x find the distance by which the load is raised okay here this case is when the free end that is this part is moved by a distance of x okay distance moved by effort is equal to x we have to find what is the distance moved by load what will be the distance moved by load it will be half the distance that is moved by effort only change is happening here okay so here this part if the effort is moving by a distance of x then this part of the rope will also be moving by a distance of x okay it will be equally distributed and then the load will be rising through a height of x by 2 distance. Okay. Either you can find by this logic, dl will be equal to distance moved by load will be equal to x divided by 2. Okay. Or we have velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by effort divided by distance moved by load. Here distance moved by effort is x. Velocity ratio is 2. 2 is equal to x divided by distance moved by load which implies distance moved by the load will be equal to x divided by 2. Okay. x by 2 is the distance moved by load. Clear? That's all for today. In today's class we have discussed about the two different types of pulleys that is a single fixed pulley and single movable pulley. We have also discussed the combination of pulley, mechanical advantage, velocity ratio and efficiency has been calculated in all the cases. We have also solved problems related to this. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session with a new chapter. Until then stay tuned to Lenohub. Lenohub free hey for best hey. Thank you.